a big well done to the immersion heater salesman and commiserations to the dental hygienists. And to you at home, thanks for watching and join us next time for another great survival trick challenge. So? So? It's nasty, exploitative, brain-dead pap. John, this is precisely the kind of programme we should be involved with. Yeah, it's reality TV, John. I know what reality TV is, Hilary. I've watched Older Brother. <laughs> no, really just join us in chambers. You don't know how we operate. Anyway, I've been on television before. It doesn't work. John, that was a photo fit. Survival Trek gets an audience of millions. I mean, this is the greatest marketing opportunity Forecourt Buildings has ever had. Your clerk, Mr Rawson, and his two daughters are here, sir. Thank you, Vince. You know, Alex, there's a 63-year-old man out there who's terminally ill with industrial asbestosis, whose entire future, what little's left of it, and the future of his family depend on me representing him in court. I think that's a bit more important than some silly television show. With prize money? It's always some silly television show with a few quid's prize money. Oh, well, it's more than a few quid, actually. Well, whatever it is, just adds to the tawdriness of the whole thing. It's 50,000 quid. So let me just come in, shall I? Uh, Hey, uh, hang on a minute, uh, Vince. <laughs> and, um, how long would this ridiculous filming take? Six or seven days. Uh, could you ask Mr. Rawson and his family to wait? This week, Survival Trek welcomes the barristers of Four Court Buildings. I personally consider Four Court Buildings' participation in what I feel very strongly uh, is an innovative and indeed on many levels culturally significant television program uh, will be a privilege as well as a journey of personal growth for all of us. I think it make a lot of the fact that people appearing or starring in so-called reality TV shows like Survival Trek themselves go on to have enhanced careers and earning prospects because of being in the public eye or meeting celebrities like um, Colin Firth. But certainly for me, that just um, doesn't hold any significant part in my thinking. Do you know Colin? Well, I suppose I feel like a, a lot of quite young uh, well, youngish uh, single lawyers. You know, you tend to work too hard and uh, uh, you live on a diet of uh, pot noodle and uh, snicker bars. Um, you don't have any proper friends or, or relationships or, or just anything else. <laughs> Not that it, it isn't a great life, no, it is, it is, uh, compared to being a nurse. Uh, of course, the role of the barrister's clerk has changed a great deal over the last five years, even. As a modern clerk, I'm very much an equal, a partner to my barristers. business goal. No, I'm really delighted to be taking part. We all are. And I'm thrilled to be captaining the team. Since when are you captaining the team? John, well, perhaps not captaining. Captaining is the wrong word. Uh, leading the team. Well, all right, not leading either. It, but, uh, isn't this whole exercise simply about uh, harnessing all the positive qualities of every member of the team? Surely the only true leader is unity. Y yes, but unity without a leader is anarchy. Yes, and unity with you as leader is fascism. Oh, I suppose it's very politically correct to have a pop at fascism now, is it? <laughs> Fitted against the barristers of four court buildings are the staff of Hair's Fair, or Dark, a unisex hair salon in Bolton. Yeah, we were really pleased with the name, Hers Fair, because it sounds like Fur's Fair, you know, the expression, <laughs> but it incorporated the word hair, which we thought were really good, you know, especially for the salon. But we didn't want people with dark hair to feel excluded. We're not into that. That just so isn't what we're about. So we called it Hers Fair or Dark, you know, because we thought it would really catch it. And come to that decision was all about teamwork. I work mainly as a colorist, but do also cover customer beverages, so in that sense, there's not a lot in the wild that's going to shock me. Well, we work as a team anyway. You know, you and the hair, you are a team. It's a partnership. There's got to be an understanding between you. So yeah, I think we'd be a brilliant match for the barristers. Before the trek starts, and for the team's own protection, they are briefed by trek judge, former Royal Marine Staff Sergeant, Tina Stent. Tina! Thank you, John! 
Each team has to cover 15 miles per day and meet the challenges we will set. Any questions? Um, yes, now, it seems that we're allowed... There shouldn't be any questions. <laughs> well, it wasn't so much a question as a comment, really. Sir. Your brief and pack tells you everything you need to know. I will remind you, you are permitted only basic kit and survival rations, 10 grams rice, 2 litres of water and one high-energy stock cube. But one member of the barrister's team doesn't seem to have read the rules. Yes, it's a phone. You won't be needing that. Well, now I understand that you don't want us to send out for takeaway food. Fine, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you won't find anything else in there. What was that? Oh, sorry, that was, uh, that was my banjo. <laughs> is it correct or is it not correct that your brief and pack makes no mention of musical instruments? Well, uh, yes, it, it is correct, sir. Actually, but Hillary, it's very clearly explained in paragraph 2.1 in the briefing pack. I'm talking! <laughs> Carrying a musical instrument is a breach of track rules. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really sorry. I've had it since I was a teenager, yeah. You know the old story, I suppose. Uh, you're 16 and you just want to stick two fingers up to the system so you buy a banjo and get rid of yourself. <laughs> John seems to have brought along some comfort items. <laughs> but in fairness, that could have been a lot clearer. By doing this, have you any idea what you've done? Yeah, I'm really, really sorry. You've shown initiative and courage. Morale, vital elements of survival, keeps your spirits up, music and entertainment. Good work. John's dispute over the rules is oh, continuing. Well, I don't know where the cooked chicken came from either. <laughs> I'm certainly very comfortable with there being no formal leader or captain of the team, and I, I know that John is too. For the barristers, leadership at least is not an issue. It's very, very nice of Alex to say that, very, very typical of her. I certainly am very comfortable with all of this. And insofar as there is um, any informal uh, leadership, uh, John and I are happy to share that role, aren't we, John? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm certainly very, very happy about that, if only because of my lifelong belief in equality and fairness. The first major challenge for survival trek is for both teams to cross the River Horwent at its lowest point. The barristers are first to come up with a solution. Oh, right, good. Well, basically, I think we can just uh, float across. Yes, yeah, I told you we can do it. People accuse barristers of not being able to think practically. <laughs> yes! Well done, everyone. Not that it matters, but I was just thinking, who would be liable, technically, in the event of anyone drowning? <laughs> the hairdressers find an altogether more practical solution. Well, we were a bit stumped at first, but then Don found this twine. We just suddenly thought, you know, plait it. Yeah, plait it. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, just sort of a branch of that tree, just let it hang down, see how it looks. I think it looks really natural. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> we'll just trim the end bits off here and there, and hopefully we'll try and swing it across. Mm. I don't think he needs a lot off. <laughs> the barristers seem to be making progress. So, we all agree that we are jointly and severally liable for any injuries in the event of a negligent, careless or reckless steering of the raft. Save those caused by or attributable to variation in current, irregular water flow or other natural means howsoever manifested. Excellent. Well, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Or ducks. <laughs> or by way of ducks <laughs> or other wildlife ducks. Platted and trimmed, the hairdressers swing across on their twine and power ahead. In the aforementioned uh, aircraft. Right. At last, the barristers are ready to sail across the Horwent. Excellent. Let's go. Hang on a minute. We don't need this. But John, what are you doing? How are we supposed to get across now? You've crumpled it. This oh. is the lowest point of the Horwent. That means all the silt in the river will gather here. Can we please be practical? Let's redraft your agreement. We don't need the agreement or the raft. Well, it's staring us in the face. All the silt full of creators' tent banks either side of the river we can just walk across. Do we have to do everything? No, look, he's right. It's only an inch or two deep all the way across. See? I was right. How do you realise that, sir? Oh, well, with my wife being in the territorials, as you know, Vince, we spend many evenings and holidays studying ordnance survey maps. You're a lucky man, sir. Right. Follow me. Hey, 
This is all your fault. It's the evening of day one of the trek. Feelings of love. Feelings of oh, oh, love. Oh, oh, oh. As the barristers make their camp for the night, Staff Sergeant Stent arrives to award marks for the river crossing. Good evening, barristers. Good evening, Good evening Staff Sergeant. Sergeant. Good evening, Sergeant. You'll be wanting to know how you scored on the river crossing. Well, I have to say, I have never seen such a shambles. If you were baby rabbits, you'd be shot. Uh, can I just say... You were say... disorganised. You wasted valuable time on a legal agreement. It was a mess. So we didn't score any points, then? I didn't say without exception, did I? No. No, Staff Sergeant. No, Staff Sergeant. You came within an ace of scoring no points at all, and you would have done. Had it not been for Hillary, he found the sandbank, he pumped this man's stomach and maintained a dry musical instrument throughout. He alone is responsible for your four points. Good night, barristers. Good night, Staff Sergeant. Why do you think she left the army? Uh, perhaps somebody found out she was a woman. <laughs> As the barristers digest their four points, the hairdressers prepare their evening meal. There are a lot of misconceptions about hairdressers amongst members of the public. <laughs> I mean, we do cut hair, but there's more to it than that. And I think that's very misleading in itself. But it's, it's a minefield, isn't it? But not that I'm political. Do you work locally yourself? So, at the end of day one, we leave our barristers and hairdressers to get some rest, some sustenance, and to prepare themselves for day two of Survival Trek. I don't know, but I've been told a couple of swings are made of gold. Don't know why they good, how am I lost in a word, Alex. What is it? Um, well, I think we ought to talk about it now, don't you? Vince, of course. Shut up, Hillary. <laughs> well, tonight at the campfire, you know, whether we do or whether we don't. Do or don't what? Invite him to have dinner with us. <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere. What do you expect him to do? Mm. Sit behind a bush? Oh, is that awful? It's just so difficult, though, isn't it? I'm sorry, I don't see the problem. Well, what are we going to talk about? I mean, I enjoy chatting to Vince about work, and that's as it should be, but what if he starts on about football or that other thing he talks about? His family. Yes. I don't mind him having a family, but the birth of his daughter, yawn, yawn. John, I can't believe you're saying this. Well, I think he'd be embarrassed. I, I know. I, I, I'll ask him to join us uh, for pudding. <laughs> oh, there you are, sir. Well, I think I got the worst of it out of your vest. Yeah. I was wondering when you were going to get that done. But I'm afraid these seem to have shrunk a bit. <laughs> I never knew your middle name was Coleridge, sir. Oh, that's Joy. Always insists on putting labels in everything. She always thinks I'm going to get my underwear mixed up with the other barristers in the robing room. <laughs> Silly, isn't it, sir? <laughs> yes. It's only happened once. <laughs> so uh, I was wondering if people were ready for some dinner. I'm starving. Oh, did I completely forgotten about dinner? Must be all this fresh air. <laughs> I've done my best to lay out a little bit of a spread by the campfire. Oh, sounds great, Vince. Oh, how kind of you to lay out a spread for the rest of us. Sorry, sir. Oh, no, no, I don't, I, I don't mean, I don't mean uh, uh, that. I mean um, uh, supper for the rest of us and um, dessert for all of us. Don't you want me to eat with you? Well, not if it's going to cause you any embarrassment. Of course not, Vince. No. Oh, it's very thoughtful of you, sir. Yeah, but do join us for dessert. You mean a cup of water? Uh, yes, yes. Well, unless you have other plans, of course. It's the second day of the trek, and going into the map reading challenge, the barristers are trailing by seven points. Now, both teams have been set down at an unknown location, and five miles away is the famous Chalk Manor Forstings, and they have to find it. It's great being out here, isn't it, Vince? Very bracing, sir. Vince? Sir? Um, can I ask you, as a man, what do you think of 
Staff Sergeant Stent. Oh, sir. As a man, she's very impressive. <laughs> I can't believe it, John. You've got us totally lost. I know exactly where I am, Alex. Uh, it's like I said, west of the escarpment, east of the woods. Let's go back. I think I'll rely on my map reading. Thank you. Uh, Vince. Oh, there we have a... Um, if I'm right, I think we should be seeing this Seroff pretty soon. What's a Seroff? Oh, that's why I'm map reading, Alex. I think you'll find it's an Anglo-Saxon word. Actually, sir, it's forest. You got the map the wrong way. <laughs> Actually, John, there's a couple of Anglo-Saxon words I'd like to say to you, if I may. <laughs> the banisters appear to be lost in the woods, and the signs are not looking good. Oh, look. Look, there are people over there. They might know. Look at those ears. You think he's some sort of mutant? <laughs> Incredibly unfortunate. How do these things happen? Yes, poor man. No, I mean, I forgot my business cards. He's a victim of some kind of medical negligence. He could have a nice little time. John, John, look at them. Oh, wouldn't mind a percentage of the fees on that. Oh, my goodness. Williams. <laughs> Come on, Hillary. The penultimate day of the trek, and the barristers are now 12 points behind the hairdressers. But they are determined to score well on their next challenge, which involves catching and killing their food for the day a rabbit. Frightened it. Well, I'm trying to kill it. I'm supposed to be frightening it. Where's it gone, Vince? I don't know, sir. Oh, I still don't like this. Why don't I make something out of these berries? <laughs> oh, they are berries, you idiot. The rabbit is scared. <laughs> oh, there it is. Get it, Vince. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> Whilst the barristers contemplate the rabbit that got away, <laughs> the hairdresser settled down to a hearty rabbit stew. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's gorgeous. I really like With it. With rabbit. I love rabbit. I thought you were never going to catch it. I'm starving. We can't afford to lose any more points. Yes, thank you, Tonto. The man whose ultimate strategy for catching a wild rabbit was here, kitty, kitty. So typical <laughs> to be confrontational, Alex, when you're the one who's completely in the wrong. Me? I'm going to have a word with her. <sighs> Let me go. I'm a woman. Stop, Argentina. This is our and our time. Yes, I know. I just thought I might come over and have a chat. Why? Uh, well, I thought that we might uh, possibly not definitely have got off on the wrong foot with certain members of our team. And I thought I might act as spokesperson and uh, come explain. That smells tasty. Explain? Uh, well, um, the thing you've got to remember about John is that he's a fat, sad, self-important also ran, which he is very aware of. Whereas I was just thinking how much you and I have got in common. With who? With each other. You know, both of us, um, women. I don't follow. Both women in male-dominated careers. Is that tomato with big bits? I'm uh, trained not to recognize distinctions between men and women in my work. No. Good for you, that's great. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh, that's interesting, because, um, I get those as well. So good to be able to talk to another girl. <laughs> Go away! Well, how did it go? Yes, I, I think I did quite well, but... You seem to have really upset her for some reason, John. <laughs> I'm lying in my bed, I'm smiling in my bed, and I feel the devil's dead. I'm loving angels instead, and I'm with all the infection. 
No, that's all right. Don't mind me. Oh, that was lovely. It's just uh, getting a breath of fresh air. Oh, right. Yeah. Splitting headache. Couldn't sleep. Please, would you like to sit on me? Sit with me. <laughs> Kind of you. <laughs> How, How long have you been, been feeling about you? Sorry. Yes. <gasps> no, it's my fault. <laughs> oh, it's a nice instrument. People debate it, don't they? But uh, I've always thought the banjo is the most expressive of all the musical instruments. Aren't the stars wonderful? Oh, my. They're like lots of pairs of children's eyes threaded along a huge invisible piece of razor wire. <laughs> <laughs> On nights like this, the vastness of the universe makes human existence seem even more remarkable. Reminds you, there's a whole lot more to life than killing and shooting people. I've never done that to me before. Oh. I think my leg's broken. Oh, just look at it. You're all right. Uh, this didn't happen. Darling. No, no, it's OK. Oh. No. No. I don't need love. Stop, Sergeant. <laughs> Vince, what was that? What was what, sir? His noise sounded like a um, gun, uh, gunshot. Oh, I didn't hear anything, sir. He must have been dreaming. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, perhaps I was. Oh. Dreams are subconscious. Did I ever tell you I have a recurring one where, I, where I'm being interrogated by a panel of VAT inspectors? <laughs> well, all of them naked, and each one toying with a dash on, of course. <laughs> Quite a common one, I think. Oh, natural, really, isn't it, sir, being away from your family? Don't ever tell you about my daughter's birth in the water pool. Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> that makes you sleep at night, then. <laughs> it's the final day and the final challenge of Survival Trek. And as I've deducted a point for Perman, the barristers can still win. 12 points behind, but 15 points go to the first team to complete the abseil in the mud tunnelling, negotiate the electrified maze and plant their flag on the finishing line back at Trek base. However, you will only succeed by being utterly professional, by showing no weakness and no emotion. It might be tempting to drop your guard, to err, uh, to be tempted, but don't <laughs> kill your weaknesses. Annihilate your emotion. It's the only way. Good luck, barristers. Good luck, hairdressers. Oh, I must have used it up last night, sir. I was just in a good mood. Go! The yeah, sailing and mud tunneling completed. We wait to see which team is first to clear Flodden Woods. The hairdressers are the first team to reach the wall. Go, go, go! Come on, come on! Oh, they're getting ahead! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give me your leg up. Come on! Now, be careful, Ben, for heaven's sake. Whilst the hairdressers power ahead, the barristers seem to be in trouble once again. Oh, come on, Hilary. I think my leg's broken. Oh, bugger, you know what this means? We'll have to uh, eat him. Ah! No, we can't leave an injured man. We'll have to carry him. That'd be ridiculous. Oh, but wait, 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 hang on, hang on. You know, we can still beat them if 
If we cut through the farmyard, let's oh, go. Right. You're doing this deliberately, aren't you? What's the matter with you? Don't you like money? The hairdressers encounter the electrified maze. Where do you think you're going? Whoa, Simba! Hey, it's all right, we're just crossing the yard. No, you're not. Oh, we're in a hurry. Faced with an angry farmer, the barristers are forced to use all their negotiating skills. Oh, typical bloody mercenary farmer. Vince, give him a couple of quid. Uh, I haven't got any, sir. Get off my land. Uh, look, look. Um, uh, we're barristers. We can, uh, we can give you some legal advice. I don't need any legal advice. Well, that doesn't matter. I mean, we often give it to people who don't need it. What's the value in it? Uh, no, no, you're missing the point. This is legal advice. Well, here's some agricultural advice. Piss off. <laughs> All right, look. Here's an IOU for ten quid. Nope. All right, fifteen quid. Nope. Look, all we want to do is cross your yard. What do you expect? A bloody great EU subsidy? <laughs> Sir, what? Hey, stop. With victory in sight, the hairdressers are distracted by a truly shocking encounter with the electrified maid. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'll give you... An IOU, personally guaranteed by my chambers, for ten thousand pounds. What? Are you insane? But Deadly, if we pay out ten grand, we'll still be forty grand up if we win. Well, done. You people bring things like foot and mouth on yourselves. <laughs> With the hairdressers stuck in the maze, the barristers power on to the finish line and victory in this highly unusual edition of Survival Trek. So I'd like to present the cheque for £50,000 to John Fuller Carp. Well, I, think, I think we're all rather lost sight of the money in trying to meet this, this wonderful challenge. Well, well done to you all. Thank you. It, it's blank. It's not right, is it? I don't know, sir. And if I could ask John, on behalf of the barristers, if he could tell us a little bit about the nominated charity they wish the money to go to, so I could fill in the winning check. Oh, uh, yes, well, um, the, the charity that I'd like to nominate is a, a small and little-known one, which operates uh, behind the scenes without a great deal of publicity. Uh, it's a fund to help young and... Uh, impoverished law students. It was actually set up by my father, Edward Fuller Carp, in memory of his father, my grandfather, who is also called John, as a matter of fact. And it has been known simply as the John Fuller Carp. So you can write it in the John Fuller Carp in there. And the money will go to, uh, believe me, where it will be most appreciated. <laughs> is fantastic. Sets your hair perfectly. How does it look? I can't move my face. <laughs> We've got enough idiots in chambers as it is. Hi, Alex. Hillary? This isn't a trick you've picked up at one of your visits to a male prison, is it? <laughs> we, we had something like that at school. I remember, what was it? Get an ambulance! Oh, oh, um, now, try and go completely rigid. Oh, that was it, yeah. <laughs> you can trust me. 